Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week one of the UPBA. This week, the very first week of the inaugural season, uh, we're up against uh, the Los Amphros. Yeah, Los Amphros, uh, coached by Dreadful Dragonite. Um, someone new to me uh, coming into the league, but lovely guy. We had a great chat after the game. Really nice dude overall. Um, if you haven't checked out the team builder, I would make sure you do to understand my team in full. But a quick recap, we have got a bulky offensive uh, Gardevoir, a uh, fast Lopony, just standard Lopony set really. Uh, we've got a mixed defense uh, Rosen Heat, a mixed defense uh, Alan Mola, a uh, Stevium Z uh, Sandrush Sweeper uh, Excadrill, and kind of a bulky sand setting, uh, Stealth Rock setting kind of offensive Tyranitar. Like I said, you guys need to check out the team builder if you want to understand the team <coughs> in a bit more detail. Um, and I've also gone over my opponent's draft, but what I'll do is I'll quickly go over it now as I've got it in front of me. So my opponent does have Mega Altaria, Weavile, Scizor, Gliscor, Miltank, Blastoise, Blacephalon, Mien Xiao, Lycanroc Day, Dublade, Zebstriker, and Weavile and Lycanroc Day are the Z-Move users. So quick recap of my draft, just so you guys can consider the team I bought compared to what I had. We've got Megalopony, Tyranitar, Uniclus, Superior, Excadrill, Rotom Heat, Noivern, Alamomola, Gardevoir, Shuckle, and Haunter, Excadrill, Noivern, and Haunter being the users. So, immediately I, I, you know, from team building, I kind of expected myself to have a really good matchup, whatever he bought, because um, Excadrill has a really good matchup against a lot of his team, as does Lopany. Um, sort of mid team building, I kind of struggled to get. So, so the first five on the right, um, Gardevoir was like the last thing I put in my team, I couldn't figure out what to put in really. Then I figured actually Moonblast is pretty free against my opponent's uh, almost entire draft other than Lacephalon and um, Dublade. I think they're the only fairy resist my opponent has. And considering they have a Weavile and a uh, Mega Altaria, I figured that would make sense. Um, but yeah, as you can see the six my opponent bought were Gliscor, Mega Altaria, Weavile, Lacephalon, Lycanroc Day and Blastoise. Now my game plan going into the game before it even started was going to be try and get rid of whatever he brings to check extra drill and then get extra drill in in the sand set up a sword stance if needed and click steel and z on something to guarantee a kill and then just sweep from there and as you can see we've got altaria weak to steel we've got uh weavile weak to steel we've got lacephalon weak to ground and uh like more day weak to ground so the only two things here um that can cause me any issues or my any issues are the Gliscor and the Blastoise. Now, Blastoise does have a lack of reliable recovery, so that thing should be fairly easy to chip down in combination with my bulkier Mons here in Alamomola and Rotom Heat and Gardevoir. So Gliscor is the main threat. Uh, that's the thing I need to, to worry about getting rid of. Now, I do have a lot of ice coverage on my team. I think I have Ice Punch and Tyranitar. I think I have, I have Ice Beam on my Alamomola. I have Hidden Power Ice on my Rotom Heat. And I have Ice Punch on my Lopony. But Ice Punch, you know, isn't horrendous in his matchup with Ice Moves anyway, because he has got the Mega Altaria. Uh, and like I said, I believe he has. Does he have a thing? No, they're the only things that he has has that are weak to um, Ice. I did also have Hidden Power on my um, Gardevoir, but that was for Hidden Power Fire for any Sizzle switch ins to, to resist the Moonblast, because that's all he really has. Uh, I, I've got to mention it in my list earlier, but. He was didn't bring it, so lead-wise, I decided to leave with my mega, uh, my normal Gardevoir, sorry. Because looking at my opponent's team, he doesn't really have anything that resists Moonblast. And what he does have is Blacephalon, which takes 40% and has a chance to have its special attack uh, lowered. Which I'm sure is something my opponent wouldn't really want to have happen. So, we're going to go into the game here. And uh, I'm challenged by Trainer Anas. Dreadful Dragonite, as I have said before. And sorry, I've got chewing gum in my mouth, so I'm like... If, if you can hear me chew, I apologise. So we do lead um, with our Gardevoir, like I said, mainly because my opponent has no real good Moonblast switching. Um, I'm going to trace my Gliscor's Poison Heal, so if this thing did want to, for whatever reason, toxic me turn one, I'm going to be healing my health, which is great. Uh, Gliscor does outspeed me, that's to be expected. In my sort of original draft of the team, um, I did have this as a choice Scarfed Gardevoir, but actually the bulky version made a lot more sense in the long run. Um, I do click the Moonblast, and as we can see, that did a lot of damage, considering it's just a neutral hit. And uh, even after Poison Heal, 
uh, if, if he decides to protect this next turn, Moonblast is going to be a KO. And if he wants to protect, that's fine, because I'm going to get more health back from Leftovers. Um, but he just decides to Roost, which, um, pretty much after the Roost effect, the Poison, Heal, and my Moonblast is going to be back at the same damage as what he was before. So the only thing he's gained out of this turn is just a bit of Leftovers recovery on my Guard Farm, which means I can actually guarantee live an Earthquake now, other than a crit. Um, but I wouldn't be too upset if Gardevoir died now, keeping it around would be great for Death Fodder. But I have got risk going to the point where I can come with a lock and click Ice Punch and kill it, or click a nice move with anything else. So I'm going to click the Moonblast because I do live the Earthquake, like I said. Looks like I would have lived anyway, but the Leftovers recovery was nice. And that glitch goes down. So at the start, of, oh sorry, in the sort of team preview bit, I did say that my plan going into this was getting Excadrill in. Uh, and sweeping late game, and I've killed one of the two things he bought to deal with the extra drill, which is awesome. Um, so in comes the Weavile. I have a, I have two checks in this. I have um, Alamomola, and I have uh, Rotom Heat. I'm going to go into Alamomola though, because it's sort of a better suited. Uh, Rotom Heat is definitely there more for the Mega Altaria. Um, and it chews this Ice Cream Crash. So I have like no HP investment in this thing whatsoever. I have mixed defenses and I have a lot of special attack because the special attack allows me to break any Mega Altaria's substitute of Ice Beam. Like I said, check out the team builder if you haven't already. Um, so my opponent does switch into Blastoise here, which I expected, and I click Toxic. So one of his ways of dealing with Extral is dead, um, and the other way is Toxic, so it's now officially on a timer. So the way he's brought Blastoise in, Yes, it's easily his best switch into this thing, but to me it screams like he's going to have Toxic. So I could go into Excadrill if I'm a real man to predict that, but there's no reason in risking it when I do have potential Death Fodder in Gardevoir. And if he does go for the Toxic, this means Gardevoir gets another turn of clicking Moonblast for free, which is lovely. Uh, we do Trace Torrent, obviously we have no water moves, so that really doesn't matter, and like I predicted, my opponent does have Toxic for the Alamomola, which um, I scouted out for. And I think I do actually have Heal Bell on this Gardevoir, but there's no reason for me to use it at this point because Gardevoir is so low and is the only thing that has status on it, whereas if I click Moonblast, it's going to do a hefty chunk to anything on his team, um, because uh, two of his things are weak, I think, I can't remember what he has left already, um, but Weavile Mega Altaria can't switch in right now, um, like in what day isn't going to want to switch in, so the only thing he has left that can switch in is Blacephalon. Knowing that Blastoise is obviously his check to the Excadrill, he does decide to save it, and I'm going to click Moonblast. I, I did sit here during the game for a while and thought about clicking Shadow Ball, which I didn't want to do because I didn't want to give Altaria a chance for coming in for free. Um, but actually, it's not too bad because Moonblast does get the special attack drop on this, uh, this Blacephalon and does do about half damage now. I was really surprised Persephalon even came, if I'm honest, because I do want to go into my Tyranitar here, it's like the perfect check to this thing, it can't get hidden power fighting, it resists both its, uh, both its stabs, like, it, it can't touch me whatsoever, and that's a, that's a crit, I'm not especially defensive or anything like that, um, I am max HP, I think I have a tiny bit of bulk, but um, yeah, that, like, Persephalon can't really do anything this game when I have Tyranitar around, so that's great. And I'm going to use this opportunity to get my Stealth Rocks up. I do expect my opponent to go into Blastoise, but that's absolutely fine by me. I can live any hit uh, that this thing wants to throw at me. It could have the Aura Sphere, but I do have the Chopper Berry. He could scald me. That's fine. I don't mind being burnt on Tyranitar. While it's nice to get chip damage off with the Tyranitar, it's just, you know, here basically to set up rocks and keep sand momentum. Um, but with the Toxic and the Sandstorm on this uh, Blastoise, it's now going to start losing its HP, you know, pretty quick uh, with all the chip damage. Uh, I do predict, I stay in predicting him to click Rapid Spin that turn and set up my rocks again. And now, sort of, I'm in my opponent's head, I'm, I'm predicting what he's going to do quite well. So I'm going to actually switch out uh, this next turn, I believe, into my Guard of War to sack it off. Because either way, if he clicks Rapid Spin, I die to Toxic and Sand, get a free switch. If he clicks Scald, I avoid uh, taking any unnecessary damage on my Tyranitars. It's, it's a good time to sack off my Guard of War, and it's done a real, real good job. Uh, the very first game I fought it to. It's the first time I've ever had Gardevoir in Draft League and I'm really happy with sort of how it fits in this team and how it's going to do going forward this season. So uh, he does click Scald and uh, sort of after Toxic and Sand we're going to chip him down to roughly about half. Now I'm going to go into my Rotom Heat here because it, it's like the only thing that I could go into that could kill this thing because I am Steelium Z not Groundium Z on my extra drill. Um, I have to click Volt Switch because I obviously don't want to stay in with this thing. 
Uh, I was hoping that he might switch out, fearing the Thunderbolt, but Volt Switch doesn't quite get the KO. And that does mean he is going to be able to get one last ditch uh, Rapid Spin off, which means any Sashes on his other Mons are still intact, which is a shame. But um, I do go into Alamo Mola because it was my best switch in. I, like, I don't think he was going to be clicking Toxic at that point, and if he did, then it'd be an absolutely amazing play, fair play to him. Um, but I'm at max health of Alamo Mola, and now Blastoise is down. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know what, X Drill has got this, it's, it's in the bag. I then realised he still actually has a Lycan Rock Day in the background, which does also get Sandwich. So I actually kind of have to change my um, my plan a bit here and maybe go a bit more um, playing defensively rather than offensively. So I have to make sure I can get rid of the Lycan Rock first before I can get extra drill in and start causing all sorts of havoc. So, like I said earlier, this is a mixed defensive um, Alamomola, so I don't really fear what this thing wants to do, so I'm going to click Toxic. And like I also said, I uh, have invested a lot in special attack into Salamomoda, meaning Ice Beam will break a max HP Altaria's sub if he decided to bring sub to stop something like a Toxic or sub on a school. Um, my opponent does just decide to up to plus two, plus two attack and speed with two Dragon Dancers. Honestly, it doesn't phase me at all whatsoever because I know I can take a hit unless he goes up to plus four, and then I think that's a guaranteed OK on my Alamomoda. But at that point, they're taking Ice Beams and Toxics to the point where he'll be dead. So I click Ice Beam and it does a good amount of damage. As you can see, this return is going to do a, a lot of damage to my Alamomola. Um, but I'm going to get another Ice Beam off and after Toxic, it's going to get it down to about 20%. And now my opponent has to make the choice of whether he wants to try and roost up, predicting like a switch, or if he wants to try and kill my Alamomola. I am going to switch out because like I said, Broken Heat is my designated switch for this thing. Regenerate it means I can keep Alamomola for uh, the Weavile in the back. My opponent does decide to roost, that's absolutely fine by me, I do have hidden power on this thing. Um, if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to touch this and uh, then that, that would be actually terrifying and I might actually end up losing. Um, so my opponent is going to roost again, doesn't bother me because after Toxic and Hidden Power Ice, it's pretty much going to be at the point where it just was and it's going to be a losing battle for this Altaria, he's going to have to click an attack to take on uh, my Rotom Heat. And Rotom Heat is just such a great check, because obviously it resists Fairy, it resists Fire Blast if he's special, and it's immune to Earthquake, because of Levitate. Um, so my opponent does decide to click Return, um, and as you'll see it does just about half at plus two, which is, which is nice. This isn't even like a max defense Rotom, there is a lot of special defense in there as well, in case he was Hyper Voice. Because um, I have less sort of like checks for a special than a physical one. To be honest, I did debate whether it would even come, but I thought I'd need to team build for it anyway. So in comes the Weavile. Um, I don't need to really sort of switch into Alamomola at this point. I want to keep that thing as healthy as possible because actually it's my check for Lycanroc Day in case that thing starts to get a bit scary. So I'm going to leave that thing in to die because it now gives me a free switch into Lopany. Um, free for me to Mega Evolve and his last three mons are Weavile, um, Blacephalon and Lycanroc, all of which will not take a Drain Punch because they're either weak or like Blacephalon. Frail and obviously isn't immune to uh, a dark move, uh, sorry, a normal move or fighting move because it's scrappy. So Drain Punch is obviously my play at this point, especially with a Weavile sitting in front of me. Um, I click Drain Punch and obviously this Cephalon is going to go down. So we're in a really good position here because the last two mons that my opponent has can't really do a lot to Lopany and Lopany can do a lot in return. However, he brings in Weavile here. And it makes me wonder if he's got some sort of scarf tech on this thing. So I'm going to play it safe here. I'm going to switch out into my um, Alan Mola. And uh, he does just go for the Ice Cream Crash. He had to go for like an Ice Cream Crash flinch, I guess. And that's what I feared at the time. If he scarfed Ice Cream Crash, is he going to flinch me to death? Um, but Alan Mola can switch in on, on knockoff on Ice Cream Crash like that anyway. So... Um, He's going to withdraw the Weavile, this is a free scald, um, but actually I think what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to click Wish, because um, then I can get my Animal to full health if needed, if, if Lycanroc did come in. But actually what I'm going to decide to do here is because obviously Lopany does resist the stab from Lycanroc, I can live any one hit from this thing. Unless he goes for Zen Headbutt, then that's just an amazing play, but I don't see that happening. Um, he's going to go for Stone Edge. 
he's not going to crit me, but even if he did, I would have lived quite comfortably. And with the wish in the air, I am now going to get my health back to full. So I'm going to pick Drain Punch, because if he Scarfed, then I can live a uh, Stone Edge and recover my health back. But actually, I imagine he was Z-Move, because he's not Focus Ash, and he just goes down. Obviously, it goes down a bit too late in the game for my extra drill actually to be able to come in and do anything. Extra doesn't even hit the field in this battle, because as you can see, my opponent's last Pokemon is Weavile, and I am just going to click Drain Punch with the Mega Lopunny and take the kill, take the win, take three kills for Lopunny actually, and we get the 4-0 victory in week one of the UPBA, um, which, from looking at the league table so far, is actually the joint highest score. So we're currently sitting second in the league table after this one win, which is probably the highest we'll have all season. Don't get used to me winning, guys, but um, yeah, that was the game. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Thank you for the game, and as it was, um, it was really enjoyable. Like I said, um, I just feel like you had a really tough matchup this week, and a lot of the sort of bulky mons I had, you you struggled to deal with. So, um, no shame in losing here, I would say. Um, guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like. Leave me a comment as well, because comments are probably my favourite thing about YouTube. I like seeing what you guys think about the battle, what you guys, you know, want to have a chat with me, talk about the, the the team, anything like that. Please do. Obviously, more importantly, make sure you check out my opponent's channel and all the other coaches' channels in the description below. Um, other than sort of what I've already said, I don't think I have anything else to add. So, thank you for watching. Make sure you come back for week two. Um, I think I'm against Gravy, aka Jack, the commissioner of the league and a good friend, obviously, of mine. Um, so, that should be a good game. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.